BotPress, ChatBase, Custom GPT, Auto GPT, Tidio, all chatbot builders you've heard of before and probably still use today. Not long ago, I myself was using all of these tools, but wasting a ton of time. While they're all great tools, none of them are as easy or as reliable to use as VoiceFlow. VoiceFlow has been around for years now and they have a long and proven track record to back them up. They are not like these new tools just riding the AI wave. All they had to do was simply integrate AI into their already existing chatbot platform. In this mini series, we're gonna cover everything you need to know from building the basic chatbot to integrating with Zapier, storing customer data, sending automated emails, and much more. By the end of this mini series, you'll have everything you need to know to get started on building your very own AI chatbots. So let's get into VoiceFlow. So this is the design view in VoiceFlow, and this is where you're gonna be starting out your project. So let's see what the interface looks like before we do anything else. So we'll start a new chat just to see what it looks like. Okay, giving me some intro messages, uh, some buttons to click. So let's see what happens if I, how do I debug my project? Okay, looks like you're having issues. Gives me a video, asks if that was helpful. If I say no, I wonder what happens. Try a question phrase differently, that might help. Okay, so you can see kind of the responses it gives and that's kind of what we're gonna be aiming for. So let's get into building this. So the first thing we're gonna do is take one of our texts and drag it over here. Now for our use case, we're gonna be building a lead capture chatbot. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hi, welcome to WGMI Labs. And then we'll generate a few variants here. It gives you the option of one, three, or five. We'll go with three. Now, sometimes the generations aren't that great, but I do like all these, so we're gonna keep them all. So enter, enter, enter. And right below that, we wanna have another text field here. So we'll say, what can we help you with? And we'll generate a few options. And then right below that, we're gonna go over to our buttons under listen. So we'll select a button. We're gonna give it two services. So for our purposes, we'll be using AI dev, add a button. We'll do AI chatbots. So they'll be given the option. Let's connect this to our block. They'll be given the option of AI dev or AI chatbot. So let's run through this just to see what we have so far. Hi, welcome to WGMI Labs. What else can we help you with? Uh, and I'll select AI dev and it'll end right there because we haven't done anything past that. So let's get back to our project. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Now, once they select one of the options, we're gonna wanna set a variable uh, to that option they select. So we'll actually click on this box here and under action, you'll see a plus icon. We're gonna go select that and we're gonna set a variable. So the variable is going to be service and we'll have a value of whatever the input we made earlier. So ours is AI dev. Now it is important to put quotes around this. If you do not put quotes, it will throw you an error. So we'll set that to AI dev and we'll set this one to AI chatbot, so we'll come to set variable. Select service again, and we'll type in AI chatbot. Great, so now once we select either of those options, the service variable is gonna get set to that option. So we're gonna wanna drag this to another text field. And here is where we're gonna say, great, you are interested in whatever service they selected. So let's do curly braces, service. Make sure we get rid of that extra curly brace there. So we have this. And right below that, we're gonna want to ask a follow-up question and ask them if that was actually the correct option. Is that correct? Now below that, we're gonna give a few buttons. So we'll come back to listen and select our buttons. 
and we'll label this yes or no. So add button, no. Now, if it's not correct, we're actually gonna route them back to our original question. So we'll come back. If it's no, we'll drag it back to what can we help you with? If it's yes, we will continue on. So we'll need another text. And we'll say, great. Let's start gathering some information. And we'll generate a few variants, see if there's some good ones. See, I don't like collecting data. Let's begin gathering some information. Let's start assembling some data. Again, don't like the data. Let's keep those two. We'll close out of that. Now, it's also important to drag this one to the same spot as the other. So we'll move it to the block. We'll actually move this one to the block level as well. So block two. So let's run through what we have there. Come back up here to the run button. Run test. So hi, welcome to WGU My Labs. What else can we help you with? We'll say AI dev. Great, you are interested in AI dev. Is that correct? No. So it should route us back to yes. What can we help you with? Say AI chatbots. Great, you are interested in AI chatbots. Is that correct? Yes. Now it should go to our information gathering text. Perfect. So let's continue there. Zoom back in here. So the information we're going to be gathering for this purpose is email and name. Uh, you can obviously gather whatever information you need, but we're just going to keep it simple and get our name and email. So right under this, we'll have another text. We'll say, what is your full name? Okay. So now that we have what is your full name, we're going to want to capture that name. So we'll come to listen. We'll come to capture. And whatever their last reply is, we're going to want to set that to the name. So we'll put it in the name variable. Capture user reply to name. So once we have that, we're going to drag up to another text box. In this text box, we're going to confirm the name. So thank you. And then we'll look for that name variable. And then we're going to want to test there just to make sure it is getting the name. So we'll run from here. Let's begin gathering some information. What is your full name? Give it our full name. And you can see it says, thank you, Tucker George. So it is collecting the correct name. Now that we have the name, we want to do the same thing for the email. So let's get out of that. Zoom back in. And we'll get the email. What is your email? Once they type in their email, we're going to capture it the same way we took their name. So we'll come to listen again. We'll come to capture. Enter user reply should be there. And then instead of name, we're going to come and get the email. So that should set email to whatever they enter there. Now, after that, we're going to do a text and say, great. To confirm, your email is the email variable. So whatever they put in will show up there. And then we'll give them the option to say yes or no. So we'll come and get our buttons again. We'll add a button. We'll say yes and no. Now, if they select no, we're going to do what we did earlier and just have them loop back to the original question. So if it's no, we'll say, what is your email? If it's yes, then we're going to handle it in a text box. So we'll say, thank you for confirming your email. So now that we got the email and name, we're going to come and start asking our follow-up questions. So we'll provide a text box and we'll ask it, what other questions do you have? Perfect. We'll generate a few variants of that. What other inquiries do you have? Any other questions? What else would you like to know? We'll accept all of these. 
Okay. And they'll input something, and then we are going to listen for that input. So we'll come back to listen. We'll come back to capture. And this is going to be stored in their last utterance, meaning the last thing they input. And once we have the last utterance, we're going to integrate our AI knowledge base. So we'll come up here. We'll come to AI. We will do response AI. We'll select our knowledge base, which we have not trained yet. We'll go over that in a second. And we'll input our variable as the last utterance. So we have that, great. So you can come over here to the left nav bar and select knowledge base. Now this is where we're gonna select our data sources. In our case, we're training it on our development agency, WGMI Labs. So we'll come and take the site's URL. We'll add the data source and put it in the URL. So this will train our chatbot on our entire website and all the text included. So we can also train with Excel files, PDFs, docs, etc. But we're just going to stick with the URL for our use case here. Now that we have that set up, we're going to come and make a new AI text box. So we'll do the response AI this time. Select our knowledge base. And for that variable, we're going to go ahead and take that last utterance. So we'll type our curly brace, come to last utterance, and select that and then it should reply to the user's question using our knowledge base. So we'll go ahead and run this from the beginning. Come over to start and run. We'll run the test. You can see it greets us. We'll select AI development. Great, you're interested in AI dev, is that correct? Yes. Now let's start gathering some information. So we'll give it our name. Thank you. What is your email? We'll just do test at gmail.com. Great. To confirm your email is test at gmail.com. Yes, it is. Thank you for confirming your email. What else would you like to know? And this is where the user is going to ask anything they want to know about your website. So, for example, we could say, what is the timeline for completing a project? We can go ahead and run that. It should reference our knowledge base that we trained it on earlier. So you can see it came back with the responses from our website and gave the user the stages of our process. So did a good job there, and that's exactly what we wanted for the response. So you're probably wondering where we're going to store that name and email, and this is where Zapier is going to come into play. So we're going to head over to Zapier's website and create a new Zap. So we'll create the new Zap, and we'll come to the trigger. And what we're going to want to select is webhooks by Zapier. So we'll select that. We'll choose the event, and you're going to want to choose catch hook. So catch the hook. Continue. We'll skip that. And you want to copy this URL that they give. So we'll copy that. Come back over to VoiceFlow. So right where it captures the email and they confirm it, we're going to actually throw something in between this. Come over here to dev and select API, and we will drag that up here. And now once they confirm their email, so this yes option gets selected, we're actually gonna move this arrow over here to our API. And then if it's successful, we're going to continue on. And even if it fails, we're actually gonna continue on just for the purpose of this video. But we'll come over and to our API and switch this to post. And we will paste in our URL that we got from Zapier. Now we don't need headers or parameters, but we do need body. So we'll come, we'll keep that as form data. And we are gonna collect the name. And it will take in that name variable. So curly brace, select name. And then we'll also have email. So we'll come up to this plus sign next to body and we will select email. And the variable will also be email. Curly brace, email. Select that as our variable. So let's go back to where it asks for our name so we can test this all the way through. Let's come back to great. Let's start gathering some information. And we'll enter our full name, so Tucker George. Submit. 
Thank you, Tucker George. What is your email? And we'll do test at gmail.com. So great to confirm your email is test at gmail.com. Yes, it is. API call successfully triggered. Thank you for confirming your email. Any other questions? And we continue on through the process. So let's go check Zapier and see what we came back with. So test trigger. And you can see that my name and email did come up here. And that is where we're going to stop for part one. In part two, we're going to cover just exactly what to do with that data, as well as a few other things such as sending automated emails and setting up automated bookings. Stay tuned for that. And until then, I'll see you next time.